First tonight, a barrister has told this programme how she was evicted from her rented Nottingham home while she was in the middle of chemotherapy. Dawn Pritchard is one of a growing number of tenants facing no-fault repossessions. Dawn's landlord decided to sell up after she made repeated complaints about mould and a leaking roof. Well, now the government is planning to ban what's known as Section 21 evictions. Our social affairs correspondent, Jeremy Ball, reports. And then these are the room Gosh. my daughter was in. You can see what a mass of black mould it was. This is what Dawn found behind the furniture in the home she'd fallen in love with. The mould's all the way around the skirting board there. All the way around, yes. He then Dawn's the roof started large. leaking, eventually leading to this. Her son's bedroom ceiling came down. It was horrific. It was just absolutely horrible to live in. You just walked around the house and thought, I'm paying a lot of money for this and no one cares about us. It was smelly. I mean, when the ceiling fell down, it was just sort of the last straw. My son was lying in bed and there was water dripping down the wall from the ridge tile coming off. As a barrister, Dawn's used to legal battles, but after months fighting for repairs, a response she never expected. This formal repossession notice telling her to move out. We were devastated, even with the problems. It was a gorgeous house. I was in floods of tears. Um, I just I can remember sitting in the dining room thinking, this isn't happening. I read it over and over again, and I just sat and cried. And then I got angry, and I thought, oh, you know, this isn't fair. But Dawn's landlord told us he'd decided to sell the house here on Caledon Road. That's why he sent her what's known as a Section 21, a no-fault repossession order, and he was perfectly within his legal rights because there hadn't been any formal improvement notice. But that wasn't the end of it. Dawn's move was put on hold because of the pandemic. Then she was diagnosed with cancer and just as she was starting treatment, she received a second repossession order. It's appalling. And I had to go through chemotherapy whilst packing up and moving house. I and mean, I can understand if you're antisocial, you damage the place, you cause problems for neighbours. We did nothing wrong. I mean, it must have taken a terrible toll on you, Dawn. Absolutely. We, we were made to feel like we didn't matter, inferior. I was not a commodity to pay their, them an income. That was our home. Now Dawn's happy in this new rented home, but others aren't so lucky, and the government's planning to change the law to ban no-fault evictions. So, Jerry, how do they want to change the law? What do they want to do? Well, we don't have the details so far, Anne, but it could be similar to new safeguards which have come in in Scotland, where landlords now need one of 17 official reasons. That includes moving back into their own home. The housing charity Shelter, they say this is going to be a game-changer after a sharp rise in no-fault evictions. And this Nottingham housing advisor told me she's seeing an increase locally. She's helping between five and ten tenants each week for Section 21s, often, she says, because landlords think they can charge more rent. If you have perhaps already got some financial difficulties because um, for example, you've been furloughed during COVID. Um, you've then got two months in which you've got to try to find accommodation that's suitable for you, that's in the area of your children's school. You've got to find uh, a deposit and rent in advance. You've got to pay for removal costs. I guess there's always the chance, though, that stopping these no-fault evictions could actually deter people from renting out homes in the first place. That is a really big concern. And, in fact, landlords' associations have warned that these changes could actually worsen the housing crisis. So this new renters' reform bill is really going to have to tread a very fine line on this. Tonight, though, with everything going on in Westminster, I suspect ministers might just have more pressing things on their minds. I think you could possibly be right there, Jeremy, for now. Thanks very much indeed.